So you want to produce music. Where do you start and what's the process? But well, we talk about it. First things first, you need to understand that producing music is a multi-dimensional skill set. It's not a one-piece skill. It requires a fusion of many different skill sets. Composition, songwriting, arrangement, sound design, recording techniques, knowing how to use different pieces of software, and more. So just because you can shred on guitar doesn't mean you can be any good at producing. It's a completely different skill set. You'll need gear, a computer that can actually handle the strain of production. You'll want to aim for no less than 16 gigabytes of RAM. If you can do more, then do it. You won't regret it. My system is a MacBook Pro with 64 gigabytes of RAM and two terabytes of solid state drive internally. Basically, it's a beast, but I'm also using it for video production for this YouTube channel. So what I'm trying to say is that 64 gigabytes might be overkill for what most of you need. Then you need gear like a DAW, a digital audio workstation. And no, please don't use GarageBand or Audacity unless you're just testing the water out or just getting started. If you're serious, then spend the money on a professional DAW. It really doesn't matter which one you get. Just use whatever's most comfortable for you. You'll then need an audio interface, a microphone or several, a MIDI controller. I mean, I guess you can technically get away without one, but I couldn't headphones and or monitors, and I also highly recommend investing in sample libraries because the real quote unquote secret of getting great sounding tracks really comes down to also being able to have incredible sounds. And with a sample library, you'll also wanna get a solid state external drive to store those samples. Let's face it, it's very hard to get pro quality with cheap sounds, so save yourself the headache and get good sound libraries. Native Instruments is by far my favorite option and it's not close. I'll also link all the gear I actually use below in the description. Okay, cool, so you've got your gear, now what? To be totally honest and frank, you're probably gonna suck at the beginning. And if you don't, you're an anomaly. But seriously, if you're just getting started, you'll probably struggle quite a bit. I actually have a whole video about that right up there. So what you should do is this. One, spend time getting to know your DAW, front, back, sideways, under, beneath, and inside out. The better you can use your DAW, the more efficient you'll be. If you're stuck always wondering how to do this, that, or the other thing, you'll waste so much time you won't be able to focus on the things that actually matter. Two, do your best to make your room ideal for recording. And let's just face it, if you're in a room like this with absolutely nothing on the walls, it's going to sound terrible. I know it's not what you wanna hear, and I know you wanna find a hack to make it not suck, and I'll tell you, the hack is called acoustic treatment. For just a recording environment, not a mixing environment, foam acoustic panels will do okay. And for those who are gonna say, Nathan, acoustic foam doesn't do anything. Well, you're right if you're talking about mixing, but there is no question that foam does help for a better recording environment. Here's just the example of before and after in that same room, which has no acoustic treatment yet because this is a new space for myself. Okay, so now we have some of the uh, treatment put up in the room. If you can't afford bass traps and high quality treatment, then use headphones for mixing and yes, you can use headphones for mixing. Referencing is the key if you do that. But if you have the budget, then you should 100% get high quality treatment like I have in my studio. Number three, learn recording techniques. Understand getting great source. In other words, make sure you're not recording in a way that makes it so your starting point is horrible. If you're tracking vocals or guitar or anything with a mic, then do not record too hot. If you are clipping your audio when you're recording, it will be a problem and you can't fix it. Try to stay below minus six dB or six decibels on your meter to be safe. The biggest mistake people make is just recording way too loud. Number four, make sure you're producing songs that are actually good. I'm just gonna say it, I know it kinda seems obvious, but if the song sucks, then the production will suck. I, I don't think I need to say much more than that. No, nah, no, that's about it. Five, sound selection is key. Obviously this isn't a video on how to pick great sounds, but to boil it down, if your drums sound like this, then anyone who knows what they're doing is gonna know that you just used a stock kit. That's lazy. Pro producers understand the insane value in picking amazing sounds. You should be laboring over every single sound you choose. I want my drums to instead sound more like this. And that doesn't happen by accident. It happens by one, having access to great sounds like we've talked about, and two, knowing what sounds to actually pick. Number six, composition and arrangement are essential. If you want to really be a producer, then you need to see that it is your job to make a song interesting from beginning to end. I'm personally not a fan of copy-paste producing. 
Yes, I do often copy material from section to section, but then I immediately am working to differentiate every moment from the rest. I do not want verse one and verse two to be the same thing. That's boring and quite frankly, that's probably why your listeners are gonna bail on your song. This comes down to creating interesting arrangements that are dynamic, that go somewhere, that keep attention. I wanna be adding something new, even if it's just one thing every four to eight bars to make sure my listener is intrigued. This is all arrangement and composition decision making. Number seven, you have to be meticulous. The reason most producers don't sound pro is simply because they aren't meticulous. I've taught hundreds of producers through my program, Producer Accelerator, and so often it just comes down to not being meticulous about every single move they make. There's a point where you just gotta make choices fast, but even in making choices fast, they need to be meticulous choices. And this is where practice comes in, because if you're not practicing, you're not gonna be able to make those choices quick and also make good choices. Editing, performance, sound selection, arrangement, all of it, if you're just throwing paint on the wall and hoping it'll stick, it probably won't. Notice how verse one and verse two here in this example sound different. All of these years I've been all alone. I started to think I was on my own. I tried before and it didn't fit. Didn't work out so I chose to quit. But I thought the years were a waste of time. Counting the days saying I was fine. I thought my days would be spent alone. I'm trying to take my listener on a journey. It isn't static. It isn't about just repeating an idea over and over and over again. Most people don't want to listen to that. They want to be told a musical story and be brought on a musical journey, so take them on one. The overwhelming majority of aspiring producers do not struggle with just one aspect here. It is a struggle with many aspects. Because like I said, producing is more than just playing a cool part or recording a vocal. It's an extremely deep skill set that requires being proficient in many different aspects of music. So if you want to be a producer, you need to realize it takes time. It takes hard work and it takes a lot of learning. I've been doing this for about 13 years and professionally for seven, and I'm still learning new things all the time. And with all of this, as I've said in other videos, you have to enjoy it. You have to have fun. You have to find passion and satisfaction in it, even when it's hard. I have an entire free workshop where I dig into these aspects and more doing a full session breakdown that you can watch right up in here or in the description below. And this playlist, wherever it is, is a great place to get started if you're new to the channel. And this is why this channel exists, to help you get from where you are now to where you want to be. So if you haven't subscribed, now's the time. We'll see you in the next one.